the Bureau Boys is an improvised detective serial. Every Monday morning, the Bureau Boys solve crimes based on clues sent in by their pumpkin formants. That's you. Go to thebureauboys.com to submit your clues. Thanks to informant Deanna for this week's clue. I went into the medicine cabinet and now have club foot and my dancing career is over. After a quick jaunt from Gloria Greenwich's barred up house, the Burro Boys... Stand outside the spooky Maple Street apothecary. Somehow, Detective Riley has found himself a tasty burrito somewhere in between the house and the apothecary. He chows down on it as Detective Potter glares sideways at him. Detective Riley, where did you get that? For God's sake, we don't have time for this. Uh, the, uh, it was the uh, the guy at the corner. He was selling elotes, a couple corn flautas, and the, these tasty burritos. I couldn't help myself. You, know, it's been so long since I've eaten. And I, after unfurling my beard and and going up down down those stairs, uh, geez, I just had to refuel. I can't believe you didn't get me a burrito. But we don't have time for to argue, Detective Riley. You can have this last bite. No, I, I don't want it. No, save it's, a good it's, last bite. It's juicy. It's got all the corn and little bits of rice. I legitimately think that I could ring out what is still in your beard and make my own burrito, Detective Riley. And if I wanted to do that, I would have done it already. So Detective Pata takes a couple chunks of chicken and steak from Detective Riley's beard and they approach the front door of the spooky apothecary. Okay, Detective Riley, this is our spookiest case yet, I would say. I'm, I'm frankly terrified. This apothecary doesn't look much less haunted than that house we just came from. No, I know, and like it's still just here. It, you would think that they, the city, would have bulldozed this place already. It obviously hasn't been in operation for years. It's an eyesore. Yeah, and it's got to be violating plenty of building codes. And and it's not like they're gonna keep this in the historical registry, right? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I actually. Detective Riley, before I go to each town that we're in, and especially since we're in this town, we live in this town, I always check the historical registry of each town that we've been to. Ask me literally anything about any of the towns we've been to. Sure. Uh, the, the YMCA back in South Park, Colorado. Yes, not a town. You're asking about South Park, though? Yeah. Just so you know, Detective Riley, the YMCA is not a town. It's an association of young men. Who are Christian? It's just there's so many young men, so, so many young Christian men. You could count it as a full town if True. you really kind of. And so many YMCA's. There's they're all over the place. Right. Anyway, go ahead. You know what? What's your question? What do you want to know about South Park? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, South Park. It, uh, the the uh, movie theater on the corner of Tennyson and Carroll Street. Detective Riley, you sound like you've done your research on the historical records of this. The on Tennyson and which movie theater on Tennyson and Carroll Street. Carroll Street. Oh, that one. Yes, no, that is correct. That is a historical theater. Uh, you, yes. Thank you, though, for asking, and thank you, Detective Riley, for knowing where where the the movie theater was located. Oh, you're welcome. I mean, you asked you asked me, and I knew, and then I asked you, you knew. We're a couple of know-it-alls just standing outside a spooky apothecary. Okay, speaking of which, Detective Riley, we gotta get into this apothecary. We don't, we're wasting time. Right. Why don't you pick the lock and get us inside? Okay. Just to remind you, I left all my tools in the boober on the way over oh. to the house. Um, but, however, if you could, I assume when you... You said you use twine to unfurl your beard. Do you have maybe like a hairpin yes. or something also in your beard? As a matter of fact, I do, but oh, I keep perfect. those on my chest. So Detective Riley breaks open his button shirt, revealing a 
mess of tangled, r- rooted hairs, twisting and tying. Whoa, 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 <laughs> Detective! You didn't have to rip your your bureau issued shirts. Huh? God. Go ahead, take your choice, whichever one. Little did Detective Riley and Detective Potter know that their shirts were issued by the Bureau and embroidered with their names. Uh, I, okay, great. Yeah, I'll, I'll just take, I don't know, this one. Yeah, just take the here, take the one below the left nipple. That's my least okay, favorite. Okay, okay. So Detective Potter removes a hairpin from just beneath Detective Riley's shockingly large left nipple. Ooh. He inexplicably wets the end of it and inserts it into the door of the apothecary. He jiggles to the left, he jiggles to the right. Then he manipulates the hairpin and jiggles that to the left and that to the right. The lock of the door snaps open and the Bureau boys enter the apothecary. Once inside, the Bureau boys look around. Behind the counter are many shelves with Dusty jars filled with strange potions. Yes, those two, and a few odd-looking dead creatures. The creatures are suspended from strings hanging down from the ceiling. A bald eagle, a white fox, a striped tiger. An albino alligator. All sorts of rare, endangered animals are strung up in the apothecary. One might think that the ceiling would collapse under the weight of these giant beasts. But it doesn't. Detective Riley, forget about code ordinance violations. There's there's a felonies being committed all over this apothecary. Do you think... Because of the poaching? Well, yes. I don't think even the poaching part is even what matters. I think... I don't know exactly, I guess, what poaching means, Detective Riley, but if you kill an endangered animal, Detective Riley, that is illegal. I don't... It doesn't matter how you do it. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Well, it's good just to clear that that piece of the law. For Detective Riley was thinking about the exotic animals that he has in his home. Right. So just illegal across the board. Got it. Detective Riley, why are are your eyes shifting back and forth? You know what? Never mind. We don't have time. We don't have time to get into this, Detective Riley. I think we should look around. Let's look around. So the Bureau boys split up and start to investigate the shop. However, it's not so big that they need to rely on some sort of ventilation system to be able to hear one another. Detective Potter starts leafing through a stack of prescriptions, which is... Most likely a HIPAA violation. Detective Riley, what was... I'm all the way over here. Speak up. Sorry, sorry, Detective Riley. Just name someone in the town. How... Oh, De- wait, I'm sorry, Detective Riley. Let me be more specific. Name someone in the town that's had a weird ailment in the last year or so. Oh, that's easy. Susan Hemmerforth. Detective Potter flips through the stack of prescriptions... Susan Hammerforth came in here for some cough medicine, Detective Riley. Right. I don't know why she needed this prescription. (laughs) Must have been a hell of a cough, Detective Riley. You're saying she did come in for the subscription, for the prescription. Correct. Yes. But the prescription is still here. Correct. Maybe. (gasps) Wait a minute, you're right. This isn't a filled prescription. Go on, Detective Riley. Perhaps she was shown to the tasteful medicine cabinet. You know, like, hey, I have your prescription. This is how the witch might do it. Hey, I have your prescription back at my house. Why don't you follow me there? I know you came to the apothecary thinking that I would have the medicine here, but it's actually at my home. Come and get it. And then she opened the cabinet door, and well, we know what happens then. That makes a lot of sense, Detective Riley. I'm looking at all these prescriptions. Here's one for hair follicle replacement. You know, Hair growth medicine. Here's one for... Sure. Yes. Here's one for... I wouldn't know anything about that. I'm sure you would. Okay. Sorry for that. That's a little... dig. I don't know why. Detective Riley. But go ahead. That's fine. Uh, Here's one, Detective Riley, for just just over-the-counter aspirin. 
Here's one for a knee brace. Here's one for just a, an ace bandage. Here's one for a tube of toothpaste, Detective Riley. Specifically, sinner's mouth toothpaste. Ugh. Just like we found at the medicine cab, the tasteful medicine cabinet, back at Glory Greenwich's house. Uh, yes, and I'm looking at all these names, Detective Riley. Maybe you'd recognize them. Gordon Philippi, Morton Jimsonen. Oh, yes, local librarian. Yes, Felicity Feline. What do those all people have in common, Detective Riley? They've all come down with very strange... Remember the librarian? Yes, librarian. Yes. Suddenly couldn't read... Just like that Twilight Zone episode, the librarian suddenly couldn't read anymore He because his eyesight got so bad. Remember? Yes. Oh, I remember. And then he jumped off the uh, Lake, Lake Street Bridge. Yeah, he killed himself. I didn't want to bring it up because it's so dark, though, Detective Riley. But all, all of these people, all these prescriptions were... People that have had horrible maladies in the past year, Detective Riley. Right. And all these prescriptions are for over-the-counter things, and they're all unfilled. Right. And so, go ahead. Go on. I was just going to say, there's one thing in common with all these prescriptions, Detective Riley. Yeah. Other than the right. two things I mentioned, there's a third thing in common. Do you want to guess, or do you want me to just tell you? Let's just say it at the same time. Okay. You know what, Detective Riley? I don't. I don't like this game either. You I'll, say you know it. What? I'll count down and then you'll say it. Okay, perfect. So it's a little. So we can kind of lead up to. Okay. It. Okay. One. Are you, two. You're going to count down or you're going to count up? Because if you're going to count down, you should go one, a half, wait, a quarter, wait. zero. So can you count up to three? And what are you counting to? Three? Ten? Wait, I was got. Well, I was counting to the surprise. I was. Yeah, right. Well, I figured you'd know the right Okay, moment. all the prescriptions were written by the same doctor, Detective Riley. We don't no! have time for your shoes. Right? Right? Isn't that crazy? All okay. of the prescriptions, same doctor. And, well, who? go ahead. Dr. Cornelius? Yes. Dr. Emily Cornelius, because, big assumption, Detective Riley, that the doctor would be a man. But it is Dr. Emily Cornelius. I would never assume such a sexist thing. But I'm glad you clarified. Yes. Dr. Emily Cornelius. Yes. Mm. So, so let me get this straight. Patients are visiting Emily Corlini, Corn, Dr. Emily Cornelius. Dr. Cornelius for short. Dr. Corn for short, if you really want to shorten it up. Dr. Corny. Dr. Corn. Dr. Corny. Dr. Cornell. That's a little longer. Right. You're right. Anyway. Dr. Us. Dr. C. Yeah, so go, they go, go to so they go So they go to Dr. C. And say, hey, I have this problem. And I need a prescription. And she says, oh, sure. Go see Glory Greenwich. Go see the, the, the apothecary. And they come here. Well, they get the prescription from the doctor. Right. The doctor gives the prescription. She, I just said she's the one who's written all these no, prescriptions. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she yeah, says, okay, she says, hey, here's her, here's her prescription. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes. And then you go get that filled at the apothecary. You know what, Detective Riley? Do you want to maybe play act this and see how a situation like this could actually go sometimes that helps yeah you're right i because i i'm still confused so let's just get into character okay who do you want to be gordon Philippi or yeah i'll be emily I'll, cornelius yeah. okay you'll be gordon no, no, and no. i'll be emily okay yeah yeah you be emily okay. i'll be gordon wait what's his name gordon Philippi. i believe right. the librarian correct i believe right wait was it Detective Riley, I don't... No, you know what? No, 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 no. That's fine. I'll you just know what? pretend... Here, here, why don't you pick a different one? Here, I'm going to hold it out. I'm going to fan them out like a deck of cards. Pick a prescription, any prescription, and it can be whoever you want it to be, Detective Riley, and I will play Emily Cornelius. Okay. So Detective Riley chooses the middle one from the right. Good choice, Detective Riley. What do you got? Ryan Stiles. Wait, the hilarious comedian? No, the other one. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was a bricklayer. That's it. V did not have a did not have a sense of humor. No, no, no. He was very, very severe, actually. And remember, both of his thumbs fell off about a year ago. Yeah, that's right. Unexplained, unexplained thumb loss. That's the medical term. You're the scientist. No, no, no. That is actually factually medically accurate. Yes. You know, expected thumb loss is when you lose your thumb in like a bandsaw accident or something like that. So, okay, Ryan Styles. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Now you're gonna enter my okay. office. All right, I'm entering. Okay, I'm, I'm just getting. I'm character. Okay, hang on. Okay, 
Right. Just kidding, character. Yeah. Medical school. University of Washington. Uh, Dr. Cornelius? Yes. Hi, I'm Ryan Stiles. Uh, not the great improv comedian. Oh. Uh, local. <laughs> I love Ryan Stiles. Hmm, sure. Local bricklayer here. I know, you laid the foundation for my clinic. I did. One brick at a time, ma'am. Now, I have... I, I, I have a bit of a... Cold. Oh, a cold. Well, why don't you have a seat on this butcher paper? Hmm. And let me All see right. what we can do. Um, can you cough twice? Preferably not directly into the microphone. Of course, I wouldn't want to upset your record, your medical recordings. <clears throat> Perfect. Well, it sounds like you do have the common cold that's been going around here. And there's only one prescription for the common cold. And that is, of course, day and NyQuil. Now, I'm going to write you a prescription for NyQuil, and I'm going to shuffle you off directly to the apothecary on Maple Street. Do you know the one? I'm familiar. I laid the brick for that foundation. One brick at a time, I'm sure. Actually, I went a little bit faster on that one. Two bricks oh. at a time. <laughs> well, well, I, you know, I didn't realize there were two such <laughs> charming Ryan Styles in this town. Okay, you can take your hands off my arms okay. now. Oh, I'm so I sorry. I think I better be going. Okay, well, uh, wait, let me finish writing the script. That's what we in the medical profession call them, scripts. Here you are. Since it's daytime, I recommend getting the day quill now, and then save the night quill for night. Okay, and scene. Good job, Detective yeah. Riley. I think we, I think we, now I feel like I'm more in that. I forgot, by the way, that there are two Ryan Styles in this town. Yeah, I know. It's, it's. One of those, one of those things about our town. Weird coincidence. The, the town of two styles. Yeah, isn't it weird though that that Johnny Greenwich is the one that put us on the map, and not Ryan Styles, who appeared for just so many seasons on Whose Line Is It Anyway, both overseas and in the states. Hey, I'm not the mayor, and I don't make the rules. Well, I just enforce them. It's weird that we're clinging to this failed minor league baseball player, though. Is it not? I, I just want some sort of acknowledgement of my sanity here, Detective Riley. Yeah, they could have done better. We could have definitely done better. Okay. I think we would have more name recognition if we had put uh, Ryan Stiles' name on the sign. Then again... They might confuse him with the bricklayer, Ryan Stiles. With, yes, and then we'd have too many bricklayer uh, association meetings in the town. And you know how bricklayers get when they all get together, slopping, slapping concrete at each other and... Rolling, roll, doing the the wheelbarrow races, and they they're just a rowdy bunch. Sure, sure, Detective Riley. Anyway, well, so once they he got the script, Ryan Styles got the script. He went to the apothecary, this this very apothecary that we're standing in. Then he comes here, he sees Gloria Gwenwich, and he says, "Hey, Gloria, I need to fill this prescription." Yes, yes. And then my, like you postulated earlier, Detective Riley, then Gloria Greenwich is like, I have, I have day quill and night quill at my home is probably what she sounds like because her name is Greenwich. And she right. then just brings them back to her home. Oh, that's just in my medicine cabinet up there. They reach into the medicine cabinet, Detective Riley, and something bad happens to them. My question is, why? Doesn't anyone remember going to Gloria Greenwich's house? That's a great question, Detective Riley. All these people, all these scripts unfulfilled, and now they're dealing with worse maladies than they came in for. Detective Riley, here, look at this one. This is a script written for Deanna Gumbridge. This one, the dental hygienist. Well, the dancer, Detective Riley. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh, right. no well, not no, the other know, detective. No, she was moonlighting as a Deanna. dancer. No, there's two Deanna Gumbriches, too, in this town, oh, Detective Riley. Shit. Are you thinking the one that's a, that's a, that's a, what did you say? A pharmacist? What was it's yours? A, she's a dental hygienist. A dental hygienist. I thought she was moonlighting a as a dancer, but you're right. No. She's just a hooker. This is the one that is a dancer during the day and a hooker at night, Detective Riley. Yeah. Or are you talking Wait. about the dental hygienist is a hooker? God, I'm so confused. 
<laughs> no, no, you were right because there's the dental hygienist who's also the hooker at night, but she does do some side dancing. I mean, I, I guess part of the, like the peacocking thing to attract clientele. Yes, this and is then, the Deanna Gombridge that's a professional dancer. Right. Okay, was a professional dancer, Detective Riley. Because if you recall, about a year ago, she got club foot. Oh, and she was going to the top. She was. She was going to be an America's next big dancing with the stars. Yeah, that airs every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. I know. On ABC. Right. America's network. And her career was dashed to the bolters. Because of that club foot incident, and she, and we don't even know how uh, she doesn't even recall having an accident. She was just, you know, dancing as usual, doing her spins at the at the local dance studio, and then, boom, foot clubbed. Detective Riley, I think what we need to do is find one name in this prescription, the stack of prescriptions that we know did not have an accident in the past year, right? Because they wouldn't have gone to Gloria Greenwich's house. They wouldn't have looked into the tasteful medicine cabinet. They would still be fine. Someone was able to resist Gloria Greenwich's insistence of going back to her home. And they might be the key to busting this whole case wide open. All right, if if you allow it... Uh... I don't know why I have to ask you for permission. I guess here, I want to, I want to, I, now that I'm in this spooky apothecary, I feel like there's a lot of energy here. A lot of strong magical energy. I could use this to remote view this suspect. You know, Wouldn't it be the easier? one who got a, we, hmm? we need the suspect first. Oh, are you saying you're going to go view Gloria Grant? What are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying I want to find the one who got away. Yeah, we don't know who it is yet, though. So how about this, Detective Riley? How about instead of that, if you use your psychic energy? Here, I'll throw all these prescriptions up in the air. So Detective Potter throws all the prescriptions up into the air. They scatter about on the floor. And then you use your psychic energy to find, the, instead of leafing through all of them, just use your psychic energy to find the one of the person that didn't go to Gloria Greenwich's house. That's how that works, right? Yeah. Here we go. Ugh. So Detective Riley goes into a deep, tranceful state. Almost like a Transylvania state, if you know what I mean. He holds his hands over the prescriptions. The prescriptions slightly vibrate as his hands pass over them. Or maybe that was the breeze. I don't know. Detective Riley, really are you getting anything? Today, Junior, a teacher. This person's a teacher? Ah, uh, the the k k Catholic school teacher at the Catholic school. Okay. God, that is. There's only four of them. God, no, no, care, no, Susie yet. Care no, Susie yet. The third grade teacher. Yes, I know care no, Susie yet. He hasn't had any maladies that to his name. You did it, Detective Riley. Garno Suziat. That's him. We've got to go talk to Garno Suziat, I think, Detective Riley. Okay. All right. Let me just gather myself. All right. No time Ready? for that. Detective Potter slaps Detective Riley twice in the face. Get yourself together, man. All right. Uh, all right. Just let's grab another... Quick burrito, and let's get to the, the Catholic school. So, the Bureau boys left the apothecary and headed toward the Catholic school. What will they find out from Teacher Gerno Suziette? Why did Gerno Suziette not fill his prescription at 
the tasteful cabinet. What is Detective Riley doing with so many exotic animals in his home? And will he get caught? Tune in next week to the Bureau Boys to find out. Bye.